Hello everybody, my name is Patrick Calmy, and welcome to Honors Chemistry. I would like to take a few moments today to talk about the Honors Chemistry syllabus. Now I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but I will highlight a couple of key components of this syllabus. Now the first thing I want to point out is that you can contact me using my email address up here at the top. It's the standard teacher email address, patrick.calmy at district196.org. But you can also find me on Schoology by sending me a direct message. In fact, you can probably send those to me after school hours up until maybe about 8 p.m. if you have any questions. But after 8 p.m., I go to sleep and you should all go to sleep too. Now the other chemistry teacher that you might have this year is Mr. Kevin Dirksen. Now Mr. Dirksen is the other honors chemistry teacher. And if you don't have him this first trimester because you're with me, you may have him or second or third trimester. Now the first thing I wanna talk about is the lab donation. Now every year we ask our families to contribute a little bit of money in the form of a lab donation. And typically we ask for about five to $10. And this allows for us to do some more intricate labs, some more exciting labs. For example, we'll be making ice cream at some point during the year. We will be doing some tie-dye near the end of the year. And this money helps us enrich the lab curriculum more so than we would be able to do with only the limited budget we have as provided by the school district. Now you can find the link for the donation on My Payments Plus, And if you go to the actual syllabus, you can click on that link and you can search for EHS Chemistry optional lab donation. Any gift or donation is welcome and we greatly appreciate all the families that generously contribute to the chemistry department here at EHS. Next we want to talk about iPads and electronic learning tools. Now it's important that you bring your iPad to school every day charged. This curriculum, as you'll soon find out, is heavily focused on video lessons which you will watch on your iPad sometimes in class, sometimes you watch them at home but you need to make sure that you have your iPad every day in charge so that just in case I'm absent or I assign an in-class video lesson that you're able to participate. I also don't want to see students using their iPad for distractions, such as watching YouTube videos or even playing chess or other games on their iPad during school. Sometimes at the end of class, there's some downtime and I may say, go ahead and play some chess or watch some YouTube videos or Twitch or something, but for the most part, you'll be using your iPad for school purposes. Now, all devices, including personal devices, should be packed away during testing sessions. And we take testing very seriously in this class, and we try to minimize the amount of opportunities for students to cheat or be dishonest, and there will be specific protocols for where you place your bag, where you put your phone during a test. Now, let's scroll up to the next page and see what's going on down here. As for personal devices, all students will be expected to put their phones in the dedicated cell phone caddy at the start of every hour. We will be having phone caddies in every classroom. You'll be expected to turn your phone over into that caddy at the beginning of the hour, and you will not be able to take it with you to the bathroom. It will stay in the caddy until the teacher decides that it's okay for you to grab them. Now, students with documented medical reasons, such as diabetes tracking or seizure monitoring, will be allowed to keep their phones on them those will be stored away in their backpacks. It is expected that they will remain in the pocket or bag unless used for medical purposes. Earbuds should be stored and out of ears during school. Now there may be some times where I ask you to watch a video or do a video lesson in class and you can use your earbuds and connect them to your iPad. But if you are sitting in class, you're expected to have your earbuds out as long as I'm talking or participating in a lab or something like that. Now, smart watches may be worn at all times, except during tests where I already talked about. We have very strict testing protocols. If the watches do become a distraction, you may be asked to take it off. Now, some students come to class with their own personal laptops. I've seen this in the past. It is preferred that you use your school-provided iPad during class. However, if a student requests it, you can use your personal laptop for learning purposes in class. Oftentimes, when I walk around, those students are using their laptops for things that are not school purposes, such as watching Twitch, watching YouTube videos, watching sports highlights, stuff like that. Now, gaming devices have no business being in school, and so keep your Nintendo Switches, keep your Nintendo DSs, keep all of your other gaming consoles out of sight. In fact, don't even bring them to school at all. Now, as for other personal devices, whether they're electronic or analog, they should be stored away 
if they are present or become a distraction. Students may be asked to hand them over. Now let's talk about how you're going to be graded in class. Grading is categorized into two parts. We've got assignments in which outside resources are allowed and encouraged and assessments in which resources may be limited. These are typically in-class tests or quizzes. Now those assignments, a majority of them will be something I talked about already. Those are those video lessons. These are five point assignments that you'll watch in the evening while you're at home before you come to class so that you're able to participate in class the next day. Now this is a paradigm shift, which some of you might be used to the standard lecture style of teaching and learning, but this is a shift. And this requires you to do the learning or note taking outside of class so that when we come to class, we open up more opportunities to do in labs, more hands-on activities, and more experiencing the science rather than hearing me, the teacher, talk about it. This is something that I personally have done more and more in my AP chemistry class and also in my regular chemistry classes. Now the grading scale is pretty typical. It's the standard grading scale for all of Egan High School. A lot of students will ask me to round up their grade at the end of the trimester and I'll round your grade up to three significant figures. If you don't know what that is, you will soon learn about what significant figures are. But that means you have done all your homework, you don't have any late or missing assignments, but typically we do not round in honors chemistry. Now, if you're going to sign up for a grade pass option, be aware that all assignments, all labs must be handed in in order to receive your pass option. If you do not have all your assignments handed in, you will not be given the opportunity and you will take the grade that you earned. Now, incompletes are only given in very specific circumstances for medically documented reasons. And so I usually need to get permission from the administration to give an incomplete. Now the summative assessments are based on learning targets that are available to you at the beginning of each chapter. So you know exactly what you're going to be tested on. These learning targets are also how we structure the class. And so if you are studying at the end of the chapter for the test and you want to know, did I cover everything? We'll use this as a checklist. These learning targets are designed based on test questions. And so basically there's at least one test question for every learning target. Now I'm not going to read all this to you because I think you all are very good students and you should be able to read and understand, but reach out if you have any questions. There is no extra credit in honors. No extra credit will be given And late work. When it comes to late work, communicate, communicate, communicate. If you do a video lesson late, you will receive up to half credit, but no more than half credit for doing it late. So make sure that you're doing all your video lessons on time. And let's take a look at the last page of the syllabus. Make sure that you take a look and read all about the excused absences and pre-planned absences. It's really important that if you have a pre-planned absence, you come see your teacher before you leave and get any assignments made up. It's a good idea to take any quizzes or tests before. Because if you happen to take a test late, I have alternate versions of the test made up for students who take tests late. And oftentimes they have less multiple choice questions and more fill in the blank questions. Although they are testing the same learning objectives, students often don't like to take them because of the lack of multiple choice options. I'll let you read the rest of these bullet points about what's expected out of you when it comes to unknown or unexcused absences. Now, finally, a note from our administrators. Basically, we really encourage you to come to school as much as possible. Don't take mental health days. Don't take days, extra days on your vacation. It's really important that you come to school as often as possible so that you put yourself in the best place for success. At the bottom here, you'll see an outline of the major topics that we'll be covering throughout the year, not just first trimester, but throughout the entire year. Well, I'm going to end this video the same way I finish all my videos. That takes care of this video lesson. Thanks for watching.